The Book of Enoch is one of the most mysterious ancient religious texts of all time, containing many prophecies, revelations, and supernatural accounts, including those involving giant angels and aliens. This work is so astonishing that many people believe it was banned from the Bible for revealing mystical secrets about God's creation of the world. And is it all true? Did God really make the Book of Enoch disappear for so long? so that some of its secrets wouldn't be revealed to humanity? Before we dive in, I really want you to subscribe to my channel here. Just click on the subscribe button below the video, and next to it, you'll see the bell icon. It's very important to activate this bell, so you receive all notifications whenever I upload a new video. And to begin unraveling the mysteries surrounding the Book of Enoch, we first need to know who this man was. In Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 to 24 say, When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Notice that Enoch was no ordinary man. Besides being the great-grandfather of Noah and part of Jesus' genealogy, he had such communion with God that the Lord took him to heaven while still alive, just as he did with Elijah. The prophets of the Old Testament even said that no one on earth had been created like Enoch, who was special in the eyes of the Lord. Because of Enoch's spiritual greatness, many people since ancient times believe that he left a book, similar to the books of the Old Testament, containing prophecies, revelations, and supernatural accounts about God and his mysteries. But due to its profound terror, it is believed that the Lord himself did not allow the book of Enoch to be included in the Bible. But what does the book of Enoch actually say? One of the most striking things in this work is said to have happened before the flood. According to the book, about 200 angels from heaven descended to earth to marry the most beautiful women. It was from these relationships that the Nephilim were born, giants who populated the world until the construction of Noah's Ark. These angels also supposedly taught their wives the arts of sorcery and the occult. They even showed humans how to master techniques for working with iron, crafting shields and weapons to face their enemies. And finally, they taught humans how to cultivate medicine from plant roots. According to the book, because of this interference in their creation and the increase of wickedness and lack of faith in the world, the Lord sent a legion of angels from heaven who defeated the rebels and cast them into darkness. Then God sent the flood and wiped out the human race, sparing only Noah and his family. This narrative leads many people to believe that the Book of Enoch actually provides evidence of the existence of aliens. According to this line of thought, God did not allow the Book of Enoch to be part of the Bible and disappeared because the fallen angels from heaven were actually extraterrestrial beings who infiltrated the human race to establish their roots and conduct genetic experiments throughout the galaxy. In other passages, the book describes Enoch as a celestial traveler who went back and forth from heaven with divine secrets revealed to him by God. Among these secrets would be details about the creation of the world, the coming of the Messiah to earth, and the end times. There are even three supposed sermons preached by Enoch to the people about the apocalypse, and another section deals with astronomical mysteries shown to Enoch by an angel named Uriel. And as strange as it may seem, many Christians who claim to accept the book of Enoch as inspired by God, just like the books of the Bible, mix their belief in God with pagan elements, mainly of Greek and Egyptian origin. However, from the 9th century ad onwards, this book disappeared and was only found again in 1773 in a church in Ethiopia. The work was taken to Europe, where it was translated and once again sparked the interest of the Western world. But is all of this true? Why would God hide a book from a man he loved so much, to the point of taking him to heaven while still alive? And if it is considered a book written without divine inspiration, 
Why would it have been mentioned by the Apostle Jude in his letter in the New Testament? Contrary to what many believe, Jude did not mention any book of Enoch. He does recall a statement from that man, but at no point does the Apostle cite any work supposedly written by Noah's great-grandfather. Let's read together what Jude actually said, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone, and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness, and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. If we read the entire chapter of Jude, we'll see that there's nothing that mentions any book. And you might be wondering now, if it wasn't in any book, how did Jude know what was said centuries ago? If Jude's book was inspired by God, perhaps he received this information through direct revelation from the Holy Spirit. Jude didn't say that he used the book of Enoch or any other book. He simply said that Enoch prophesied something, but it's not revealed how he knew that. The Christians of the early years after Christ's death were guided by the canonical books, that is, those inspired by God, and it was the Holy Spirit who directed them to believe this way. It's very clear that the book of Enoch was not inspired by the Lord. It never was part of the Bible, and it contains numerous texts that go against what the Word of God says. Furthermore, this book was not written by the Enoch we know from the Bible. This work was created by someone who wanted to pass as the biblical character a little before, or perhaps a little after, the times of Christ. This person must have gathered some legends about Enoch, created others, and put them on paper. The truth is that there is no evidence that Enoch left a book that would have escaped the waters of the flood to reach our days. There is plenty of evidence of divine inspiration throughout sacred scripture. In it, you find details of situations in which the authors themselves were not present, or it was simply something that came from the heart of God. Let me give you some examples for you to understand. In the Gospel of Luke, it is written that Zacharias and Elizabeth were righteous in the eyes of God. But how would Luke know this if God himself had not revealed it? How could he write about Jesus' anguish and his words of prayer on the Mount of Olives when Christ prayed alone? How would Luke and the other apostles know about the sweat drops of blood and the angel who comforted Jesus if the disciples were sleeping and no one else saw it? All of this is in that gospel, but usually we read it without paying enough attention to ask. How did Luke know this? So, don't believe it when they say that the book of Enoch should have been part of the Bible. Instead, stick to what was revealed by the Holy Spirit in the inspired books. Trusting in scientific, historical, or archaeological records that change with every new discovery or in texts that did not undergo the scrutiny of the early Christians will put you on dangerous ground, far from the word of the Lord. The truth is that many of the people who talk about the book of Enoch or other apocryphal books never even read all the books inspired by the Holy Spirit that are in the Bible, or if they did, they did not absorb what they say. After all, Christ said that if we know the truth, it will set us free. So. If you're curious to know what the content of these books is, first get to know the Word of God well, for if you know the truth, it will be much easier to identify what is a lie and what has not come from the Lord. If you like this video, share it with your friends and family. I'll leave two videos here on the screen that I specially selected for you. Click on any of them. I'm sure they will help you a lot. God bless you. I'll be waiting for you in the next video.